This is Living Miracles Productions. To learn more about David Hoffmeister and the Living Miracles community, please visit www.acim.cc and www.acim.me. Okay, well, we will open it up to questions. Bien, okay. entonces vamos a volver a abrir un tiempo para preguntas. Yo quería preguntar, I wanted to ask you, que nos dieras un ejemplo de cómo que perdonaste algo en tu vida. How you forgave ¿Cómo, something in your life? How, how did it go? Okay. Well, first, let me talk a little bit about forgiveness. Primero déjenme hablarles un poquito acerca del perdón. Because we have all been raised with an idea or a concept of forgiveness. That we are to forgive people who have harmed us in the past. Forgive people for what they did to us. Or forgive people for what they didn't do for us that they should have done for us. Now we're being taught by Jesus that we have to release all of our perceptions of the past. And he says we must forgive people Forgive our brother, our sister, for what they did not do. So you can see we're going to have to be convinced by the Holy Spirit that the past was an illusion. We need to be convinced that every person that we thought we knew, we never really knew who they really were. The Course teaches us that whenever we meet someone, we are not meeting them in the present moment. El curso nos enseña que cuando conocemos a alguien, no nos estamos conociendo en el momento presente. We're just seeing our past reactions to them acted out in front of us. Todo lo que estamos viendo son nuestras reacciones pasadas que se están actuando frente a nosotros. So, the ego just presents a picture of something that's, that's incomplete. Entonces el ego realmente está presentando una imagen que está incompleta. But people just act out our own incompletion in our mind. Pero la gente todo lo que hace es actuar todo eso que quedó incompleto en nuestra mente. So we can try to talk about examples of forgiving a person. Entonces podemos tratar de hablar acerca de ejemplos de cómo perdonar a una persona. But for most people, there's the experience that you have to keep forgiving over and over again. Pero para la mayoría de las personas, eh, ellos creen en que tú tienes que estar perdonando a la gente una y otra y otra vez. In the Bible, it says we should forgive seven times seventy. En la Biblia dice tenemos que perdonar 70 veces 7. But I've already done that. I I forgave 490 times and it still didn't work. Yo ya lo hice. Yo he perdonado 490 veces y sigue sin funcionar. Because you have to go into a state of mind that that takes you beyond the persons. Porque tienes que entrar en un estado mental que te lleva más allá de las personas. Every time you feel any kind of upset in your consciousness, then that is an opportunity for forgiveness. We could say that in order to forgive, you must learn that time is not linear. Que el no es because the ego invented linear time 
to repeat the same mistake over and over again. Porque el ego inventó el tiempo lineal para repetir el mismo error una y otra vez. And you will not find peace of mind in repeating the past. Y no vas a encontrar la paz mental si repites el pasado. So, nowadays I use things like uh, quantum physics. Entonces ahora uso cosas como la física cuántica. Because we have to have a whole different perception of everyone and everything. Porque necesitamos tener una percepción totalmente diferente de todo y todo. I, I teach forgiveness through movies. Enseño acerca del perdón a través de películas. Because it's such a profound, deep experience that we have to go open up to. Porque es una experiencia tan profunda que, nos, que tenemos que abrirnos a ella. But in terms of just a basic example, Pero en términos de un ejemplo básico, it could be letting go of of a perception of a physical symptom. Podríamos referirnos a soltar nuestra percepción de un síntoma físico. And having a miraculous healing. Y tener una sanación milagrosa. That happens in one instant. Que se puede presentar en un instante. It could be like meeting someone who who you had ill feelings toward and feeling just a sense of openness and love. Puede ser encontrarte con alguien con quien tú tenías resentimientos guardados, de repente sentir un algo de una sensación de apertura y de amor. And it could even be as simple as going through your day and letting go of expectations of how the day will happen. O simplemente puede ser pues vivir tu día sin ninguna expectativa de qué es lo que tiene que pasar en ese día. You might say that all of your time on earth is just meant to learn complete forgiveness. Y podríamos decir que todo tu tiempo en la tierra tiene como objetivo que tú aprendas lo que es el perdón absoluto. And it's the realization that there is no cause outside of mind. Y es percatarte de que no hay ninguna causa fuera de tu mente. So we use all different types of uh, forgiveness processes. Todos nosotros utilizamos diferentes tipos de procesos de perdón. Uh, we use dyad ex exercises, um, gazing and talking to each other two people. Utilizamos diadas donde tenemos ejercicios en que dos personas se están hablando una frente a la otra. Uh, we use worksheets. I think there's a worksheet in the back of um, uh, one of the book, Awakening to a Course in Miracles. Um, we, we have many different ways in which forgiveness comes into practice in our daily lives. We live in a community that practices two basic guidelines. Nosotros vivimos en una comunidad que practica dos guías o dos lineamientos básicos. First one is no people pleasing. La primera es nada de complacer a los demás. So we're not trying to act and feel and think based on what other people think and feel. Nosotros tratamos de no actuar o pensar o sentir con base a las expectativas de otros. And the second one is no private thoughts. Y el segundo lineamiento es nada de pensamientos privados. And this gets very interesting. Y ahí es donde las cosas se ponen interesantes. Because people are encouraged to share their emotions and their thoughts. Porque alentamos a las personas a que compartan sus emociones y pensamientos. And this also takes some discernment. Y esto también requiere algo de discernimiento. Because you have to feel a sense of safety and non-judgment to let these thoughts come up. Porque a fin de que se compartan estos pensamientos y estos sentimientos, primero se tiene uno que sentir que está en un ambiente seguro, un ambiente donde no va a ser juzgado. Yeah. <coughs> so just like uh, Jerry and Diane work with groups and have a process, we also have a process that helps people get in touch with the, the darkness inside. Es de, de la misma manera en que Jerry Jankowski y Diane, su esposa, forman grupos donde las personas trabajan en procesos, nosotros igualmente tenemos dinámicas donde también 
trabajamos con estos, estos procesos para que la gente empiece a sacar lo más oscuro que tienen adentro. And so I would say for for the night or even through the weekend, if if you have a specific grievance or a specific conflict that you're working on, we can use that as an example uh, to help you work through it if you would like to. Entonces, si durante este fin de semana ustedes tienen algún resentimiento o algo guardado que quisieran trabajar, pues si ustedes nos lo permiten, pudiéramos eh, utilizarlo para trabajar justamente ese sentimiento aquí dentro de la seguridad del grupo, si ustedes estuvieran de acuerdo. Jesus says in the course, Jesus says in the Course of Miracles that we do this to ourselves. En el curso de milagros dice que eso es algo que nosotros nos hacemos a nosotros mismos. And that's the good news and the bad news. Eso es tanto buenas noticias como malas noticias. Actually, it's all the good news. <laughs> <laughs> Because then you can start to work with it in a practical way. Porque si es algo que tú te haces a ti mismo, entonces puedes trabajarlo de manera práctica. So you may not really believe it, but uh, when I when I started to really practice the course, Puede que no lo creas, pero yo a el curso, I had to really uh, practically apply this idea that I do this to myself with forgiveness. So if everything is a projection of the split in our mind, the fear in our mind, entonces si todo es una proyección de esta división en nuestra en nuestra mente, de este miedo que vive en nuestra mente, we have to start to question all of those things that we seem to be at effect of. We seem to be at effect, like something can affect me in a negative way. Entonces tenemos nosotros que empezar a cuestionar todas esas cosas que dejamos que nos afecten de una manera negativa. So in that way, everything here, everything that we experience is for our awakening, Entonces, if we use it. Visto, la, vista las cosas desde esta manera, vemos que todo lo que nos sucede es para nuestro beneficio. Es una experiencia que está allí para que nosotros la aprovechemos en nuestro beneficio. So that's what we're going to go into this weekend. It's like, I love that David invited everybody to work with particular things that might feel like a block in your mind or something hurtful or something that's on your heart but this weekend we can we can practice forgiveness and, and, and show in a practical way how to lift it up to the spirit and have it healed entonces creo que es una buena idea eh, ya que lo sugirió ahora David que empleemos este tiempo en este fin de semana para si quiere alguien trabajar en aspectos del perdón y que quieran compartirlo con nosotros pues podamos utilizar esa experiencia como algo que nos permita a todos conectar con nuestro corazón y elevar nuestro espíritu. Yes, that would be excellent. Sí. Tú mencionaste que las relaciones son para perdonar. Cuando te preguntaron referente al matrimonio, si has estado casado. Yo creo que también hay una parte muy, muy importante que, que es la dicha que se puede vivir o la felicidad que se puede vivir en la vida en pareja. Yo creo que es, o sea, esa es mi experiencia. Este, ese es un comentario. Y una pregunta, ¿qué sucedería si todos hacemos lo mismo que ustedes hacen ¿quién le proveería el dinero para que vuelen el avión va a venir aquí que construya esto para que haya los pagos los bills las cuentas de yeah um, people have said if They said if everyone lived like you live, the whole world would disappear. <laughs> And actually the world has disappeared for me three times already. <laughs> In A Course in Miracles that's called Revelation or the Great Rays. The Great Rays. So 
you might say that the whole world and the perceptual world is like a veil drawn over the light. Podemos decir que todo el mundo, el mundo que percibimos, es como yeah. un gran velo que tapa la luz. Yeah. And sometimes people will have like a near-death experience and they'll go into the light and know that they're one with everything. Y hay veces que las personas pasan por experiencias cercanas a la muerte y que sienten que son jalados hacia la luz. Y ahí tienen esta conciencia de ser omniscientes, de conocer todo. And that, that has happened to me three times where the world it went from three-dimensional to two-dimensional and then it just completely disappeared. Y eso me ha pasado tres veces en la vida, donde el mundo pasó de ser tridimensional a bidimensional a un momento en que todo el mundo real a nuestro alrededor desapareció. So sometimes people talk about the vision of Christ. Hay personas que a veces nos hablan de la visión de Cristo. This is not a perceptual vision. No estamos hablando de una visión que se percibe con los sentidos. It's just pure abstract light and oneness. Estamos hablando de una luz abstracta y de la unidad. And when the veil parts and you have the experience directly of the light, you see that nothing that you perceived had any reality. Y entonces cuando desaparece el velo y tú tienes la experiencia directa de la luz, te das cuenta de que nada de lo que habías percibido antes era la realidad. Not the single people or the couples. Ni las personas solteras, ni los casados, o not, los, los que están en pareja. Not the oceans or the mountains. Ni los océanos, ni las montañas. Or the stars and the planets. Ni las estrellas, ni los planetas. You see that none of that has any meaning whatsoever. Te das cuenta de que nada de eso tiene absolutamente ningún sentido. So joy is a real experience. La alegría, la dicha, es una experiencia real. But in order for it to be consistent, the mind cannot be identified with the body. Pero para que tengamos dicha de manera consistente, la mente no puede estar identificada yeah. con el cuerpo. So the things that we call being single or being coupled um, or being a part of a family or a country a todo aquello a lo que nosotros nos referimos como estar soltero, estar en pareja, ser miembro de una familia, yeah. pertenecer a un país. These are all concepts, self-concepts. Todos esos son autoconceptos. Uh, the Bible would say they are idols. La Biblia incluso los llamaría ídolos. And the Bible told us to hold no idols before God. ¿Y qué es lo que nos dice la Biblia? Que ante Dios no tengamos ídolos. That just means don't hold any images higher than the light. Es decir, no sostengas una imagen por arriba de la luz. So I can I can feel where your heart is because I know that through the partnerships my heart has opened so wide. Y yo entiendo el, por, el porqué de tu pregunta, ¿no? Porque es a través de mis relaciones con otros que yo he sentido cómo mi corazón se abre. Para llegar a la luz. And I can definitely say I have experienced joy through the Holy Spirit's use of relationship. Y yo puedo decir que he experimentado una profunda alegría cuando he permitido que el Espíritu Santo use mis, mis relaciones para abrirme a esta alegría. Yeah, it's a beautiful way to, to transcend the ego. Una man, es una manera muy bella de trascender el ego. And there are a lot of spiritual paths that say relationships are bad. Y hay también muchos caminos espirituales que dicen que las relaciones son negativas. But that's what I like about A Course in Miracles, it welcomes relationships. Pero eso es lo que a mí me gusta del curso de milagros, que da la bienvenida a las relaciones. It says relationships are like mirrors. Y te dicen las relaciones son como espejos. And they can help you find out and expose more of the darkness in a much more rapid way que te pueden ayudar a identificar y a dejar expuesta mucha de la oscuridad por una vía más rápida que por otras alternativas. So that's why I, I have such gratitude for every relationship that the Holy Spirit brought to me. Y es por ello que yo tengo tanto agradecimiento por todas las relaciones que el Espíritu Santo ha traído a mi vida. 
and in this particular trip, there is three of us uh, showing up together, so it looks like a triple. <laughs> Although the hotel, our host booked me into one room and the ladies into another room. And the receptionist, when we showed up, uh, five of us, they said, the same there's only room. one room. David says, one mind. <laughs> so, so it's irrelevant whether we are in a couple, we are single, we work or not, whatever, it's irrelevant. At the end, the most important is to be in the light or live in peace with God, you see. It's, I would say, it's most important to be guided. You can ask, you can put the question and the answer to the one. Bueno, translation. Entonces, creo que lo que nos estás diciendo es, es que es irrelevante si nosotros vivimos eh, como solteros o como pareja. Eso no tiene, eso no tiene ninguna importancia. En realidad, todo lo que importa es que aprendamos a vivir en, en la luz y dejemos que la paz esté en nuestras vidas. Because the Spirit knows what's best for us moment by moment, and we really need to listen and follow that guidance. Mira, yo más bien lo que te diría es que lo que tienes que permitirte es, o dejarte ser guiado, porque el Espíritu Santo está con nosotros, presentándose momento a momento, y tú todo lo que tienes que hacer es dejarte llevar por la guía del Espíritu Santo. And I said before, when I was speaking, I said a relationship is a commitment. Y como yo había dicho hace un momento, una relación es un compromiso. And even though it's a temporary commitment, incluso si es un compromiso temporal, it's leading us towards a, a greater commitment to God. Te está llevando hacia un mayor compromiso con Dios. So, I do not take uh, relationship assignments lightly at all. Entonces, para mí, las tareas de vivir en pareja no es algo que yo tome a la ligera para nada. I, I have waited for the Holy Spirit to guide me into an assignment. And if the assignment is ever to end, then the Holy Spirit has to tell me that. So that's why we were talking about earlier, it's very different from dating. Dating is like the ego's attempt to get a partner. <laughs> uh, we've had some great experiences of, of hearing people's stories of, of following guidance. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will put, you, will put two people together and they are very resistant to coming together. Yeah, but it's, it's very rapid forgiveness lessons. It really gets down to purpose. If you're using a relationship to prop up a self-concept of the ego or to wake up, so we use relationships uh, for awakening. We use relationships for forgiveness. Entonces nosotros utilizamos las relaciones. Bueno, no tanto utilizamos, sino que aprovechamos las relaciones para despertar, para tomar conciencia. Talk to us more about atonement. Mm -hmm. I've heard of, you know, your, your talk and all. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I just have to speak these things to understand. Okay. 
Expiación. ¿Puedes expiación. hablar un poquito más acerca del concepto de expiación? Yes, even, even the translation of atonement uh, it can, <laughs> is not good. <laughs> the Spanish translation of, of atonement is not good. Por eso incluso la traducción al español del término inglés que es yeah. atonement, y que lo ponen en español como expiación en el libro de Curso de Milagros, no es bueno. Really, atonement means correction. Porque el concepto en inglés significa correcto. So you're not paying for sins or you're not uh, doing something to, to, to uh, make up for, repent or make up for something that you really have done. So Jesus is an example of one who accepted the correction for the belief in separation. Entonces estaremos utilizando el concepto en inglés de atonement, más bien como corrección. Y Jesús creyó que esa corrección era una manera de obtener reparación. And really, ¿Perdón? De la corrección de la idea de separación. Ah, perdón, de corregir la idea de separación. Gracias. Yes, yes. And so really, it's the Holy Spirit's function to lead the mind back to the correction. Entonces es la función del Espíritu Santo de llevar a la mente de vuelta a la, a la corrección. Yeah. So, the ego made this whole world, this whole cosmos, out of hatred. El ego hizo todo este mundo, todo este cosmos, a partir del odio. But the Holy Spirit corrected this immediately. Pero el Espíritu Santo corrigió esto de inmediato. So when we empty our mind of all the judgments and darkness, Entonces, cuando vaciamos nuestra mente de todos los juicios y de toda la oscuridad, the Holy Spirit is taking us closer towards the, the final correction. El Espíritu Santo nos está acercando más a la corrección definitiva. And this is just a state of, of acceptance. Y este es simplemente un estado de aceptación. It doesn't create anything new, it just is accepting what has already happened. No está creando nada nuevo, sino que está aceptando lo que ya pasó. And we have to build our trust in order to reach this final commitment. Y tenemos que ir incrementando nuestro nivel de confianza a fin hasta poder llegar a este último compromiso. This correction shows us that that the light is valuable and that the images of the world are valueless. Esto, esta corrección nos enseña que la luz es lo que tiene valor y que las imágenes que percibimos de este mundo no lo tienen, no tienen valor. And uh, Francis has been speaking a lot about that topic, about learning to tell the difference between the valuable and the valueless and then let the valueless go. Y Francis de hecho ha estado platicando, dando muchas pláticas acerca de este tema, ¿no? de lo que tiene valor y de lo que no tiene valor y cómo poder dejar ir, cómo soltar aquello que no tiene valor. And using examples from her life about how she had to face things and see them as they truly are. Y para ello ella utiliza ejemplos de su propia vida donde nos dice de cómo ha visto cosas que donde se ha percatado de que no tienen valor para soltarlas. And the Course in Miracles says that we don't know the difference. El curso de milagros nos dice que no sabemos distinguir la diferencia entre lo que tiene valor y lo que no lo tiene. So we have to be taught, we have to be shown. Entonces nos tienen que enseñar a distinguir esta diferencia. Hace un momento mi compañera Sonia preguntó acerca de cómo poder perdonar. Yo tuve una experiencia hace un año de un robo en mi, en mi casa was, uh, robbery, uh, y una amiga me dijo que era porque yo tenía que pagar algo para mí fue muy fuerte y antes del robo que decías antes sentí que el Espíritu Santo me andaba I felt that y the Holy decía, Spirit to me, vete de ahí porque sentía que me iban a robar 
someone was going to casa, come in and break into my home. Me roban. So when I went ah, into my home, me the thieves came no in and they, and they robbed. Or but espiar. three days before that, no the señor. Holy Spirit warned no me, no me but I didn't decía, know how to do that. I simply said, all right, I, I release and I produce you Christy for speaking that I can't have it. I said, Holy Spirit, please correct me with the mistake in my mind. I asked for atonement. And I said this, and I said this, and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's good that we, we start to see that atonement really isn't directed towards specific circumstances. It's directed at our mind. So in this world, we're always choosing between different forms. And the Holy Spirit knows that all the forms are really the same. So in one sense, we're spinning our wheels and going nowhere. So, uh, it's like when a baby uh, doesn't have any attention. A baby, you know, their eyes are wandering, they have no attention. First, the Holy Spirit has to get our attention. And A Course in Miracles is one way to really get your attention. And Jesus wants to simplify our decision-making process. Think of it when you go to a restaurant and they bring a very big menu. And you have many, many choices on the menu. The decision-making process can either be very simple or very complicated at the restaurant. If you are tuned into guidance, you can just go, I want that, right away. Yeah, it's just a given decision. Or the ego can sit there for 15 minutes. Oh, what's this? And change back and forth. Have you ever had dinner with somebody who like when you were hungry and they were, <laughs> they were just, <laughs> yeah. So the, the Holy Spirit is saying there's just two purposes. One is called ego and one is Holy Spirit. And we need to learn how to choose the Holy Spirit and let go of choosing the ego. Y lo que tenemos que aprender es tomar la opción del Espíritu Santo y soltar el ego. So let me give you a practical example. Permítanme darles un ejemplo práctico. A Course in Miracles teaches that sickness is a decision. El Curso de Milagros nos enseña que la enfermedad es una decisión. And for most people on the planet, they do not believe that. Y la mayoría de las personas en este planeta no cree esto. They can think of all kinds of reasons why they get sick, but not their own decision. <laughs> and so one time, in A Course in Miracles gathering, someone said to me, who in their right mind would choose to be sick? Alguien me dijo, bueno, ¿quién en su sano juicio optaría por estar enfermo? And I said, you've got it. 
No one in their right mind would choose to be sick. But the ego is tricky. And it's very clever. And so it has made it has made guilt attractive. It has made sickness attractive. Now how can sickness be attractive? Well, I'll give you an example from my life. When I was young, uh, my parents would always take me to church. Every week I had to go to church. <laughs> there was no choice in that decision. And one week I was uh, under the covers in my bed. It was Sunday morning. And I just kept saying over and over, I don't want to go to church. I was determined that I would not go to church. But I knew that my mother would come in and find me under the covers. And she would grab my arm and drag me out to church. So I kept saying, I don't want to go to church. Over and over and over. And then I started to get sick. I started to get a fever. And I went, oh, this is good. <laughs> this is very good. So when she would come and pull away the cover, I would give her my best sickness. And, oh. I feel my forehead. And uh, occasionally I would use this for not wanting to go to school too. I realized that I could use the power of my mind to make myself sick. Now Jesus says this is loco. <laughs> this is loco. <laughs> because because sickness is a crazy choice. If you could choose between health and sickness, why would you choose sickness? That's the strange thing about this world. <laughs> because the ego is a very strange belief. And it actually tells us that there are benefits to sickness. The ego says it's better to be sick and little and weak and frail. Than to accept the love that you truly are. But when we learn to forgive the ego, we can accept the love that we truly are. That's careless. When we talk about this, many people always ask the question, then why do babies get sick? Why newborns can have leukemia? Or born with, I don't know, a, a lung disease or whatever. So how would you explain that? Yes. Well, the mind that chooses sickness is not in the body. La mente que opta por la enfermedad no reside en el cuerpo. And oftentimes the assumptions are that a, a newborn baby does not have a mind. Y muchas veces la gente supone que un bebé recién nacido no tiene una mente. Or that it does not have a developed mind. O que no tiene una mente desarrollada. But this is the error of equating the brain with the mind. 
Pero este es un error que resulta de pensar que el cerebro es lo mismo que la mente. And there are people like uh, Carolyn Mays who talk about contracts, prearranged contracts. Y hay personas o autores como Carolyn Mays que nos habla de contratos, contratos preacordados. So the course teaches the script is written. Entonces el curso nos dice, bueno, el guión ya está escrito. And even those uh, symptoms of uh, newborns born with um, birth defects or diseases. Incluso si tenemos recién nacidos que nacen con defectos o si tienen enfermedades, incluso siendo recién nacidos, are all part of the ego's projected linear script. Todo es parte del de el guión lineal proyectado por el ego. And Jesus teaches us in the course that that the mind is not the brain. Y Jesús nos enseña en el curso de milagros que la mente no es el cerebro. He even says that that a, a brain like a brain activity or we could say like a, a like a little neurotransmitter compared to thought is like comparing a matchstick light to the sun. Y él nos dice que el cerebro o un neuro, la actividad de un neurotransmisor en nuestro cerebro eh, si pensamos en relación entre el cerebro y la mente esa actividad de un neurotransmisor en nuestro cerebro sería como un cerillo comparado con la luz del sol que ilumina nuestra mente. So, that is a very common question but it presumes that the mind is, the baby does not have a mind. Esta es una pregunta muy frecuente, pero está presuponiendo que el bebé no tiene una mente. Um, um, you mentioned earlier, and I know, and I've heard it in your talks, but I had to write it down. Mm -hmm. uh, the ego made the cosmos out of hatred. And in the talk that I heard from you, said that to say or think this or to have this idea has the underlying assumption of separation happened. So now I'm confused. The underlying assumption? That separation happened. So I'm confused. Yeah, I Did can. you let me Mira, quiero hacerte un comentario de algo que mencionaste anteriormente pero que tengo incluso aquí anotado. Tú dijiste que el ego hizo el cosmos a partir del odio y que esto nos lleva a la ilusión de que estamos separados, pero como que no acabo de entender esto bien a bien. ¿Lo podrías explicar un poco más? Yeah. Well, there are teachings in A Course in Miracles that I call metaphors or, or like stepping stones. Hay enseñanzas en el curso de milagros que yo llamo metáforas o hitos en el camino. And these steps are always given because the mind already believes in separation. Y tomamos esos pasos porque la mente ya cree de antemano en la separación. Uh, I will say that when Helen Schuckman was taking down the dictation of A Course in Miracles. After quite a few chapters, Helen and her collaborator Bill had a question for Jesus. It's like they stopped and paused and said, Jesus, could we just ask one tiny Question. Se detuvieron, hicieron una pausa y dijeron, oye Jesús, ¿te podemos hacer una preguntita? How did all this happen in the first place? A ver, ¿cómo sucedió todo esto en primer lugar? Since God is love. Puesto que Dios es amor. And Jesus said, it's a good question. Y Jesús dijo, es una buena pregunta. And you can tell by your emotions y tú puedes decir por tus propias emociones that you believe that the separation has happened. Que tú crees que ya pasó la separación. Believe. Crees. <laughs> and so, the whole course is written to address this one strange belief. Y todo el curso de milagros se escribió 
para abordar esta extraña creencia o para responder esta extraña creencia. So the course is written for a mind that is sleeping and dreaming. Entonces el curso ha sido escrito para una mente que está dormida, que está soñando. And for a mind that believes the separation has happened. Y para una mente que cree que la separación ya se dio. If it didn't believe in the separation, it wouldn't need a course in miracles. Porque si no hubiera creído en la separación, no necesitaría un curso de milagros. Which is know itself as Christ. Que sabemos que es en sí mismo Cristo. So, in the Bible, it says in Genesis. En la Biblia, en el Génesis. That God created the heavens and the earth. Dice, Dios creó los cielos y la tierra. And Jesus says, no, this is not true. Pero Jesús nos dice, no, eso no es cierto. So it's overturning one of the most basic things in the Bible in Genesis by saying, God created the heavens and the ego projected the earth. Y entonces ahí en realidad está trastocando la intención original, porque en realidad Dios creó los cielos y el ego proyectó la tierra. And then he says, uh, instead of talking about a tree of good and evil, or a snake, or two naked people. Y entonces en vez de hablar del árbol de bien y del mal, o de una serpiente, o de dos personas desnudas, no, he doesn't go into any of that stuff. <laughs> he says, into eternity, we're all as one. There crept a tiny, mad idea. At which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. The Son of God remembered not to laugh. Y que el, sol, el Hijo de Dios, perdón, se acordó de no reír. Yeah. Now, he's talking about the separation as if it really did happen. Y ahí se está hablando de la separación como algo que sí hubiera sucedido. But again, he's trying to be practical for who's reading the book. Pero de nuevo, está siendo práctico y viendo, bueno, quién es quien está leyendo el libro. Because in the end, the ego is reading the book. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, you see. But, Jesus knows that there is a mind that believes that the ego is real. And that's why he starts speaking about the atonement. And he says that the atonement is the awareness that the separation never happened. Y nos dice que la corrección en realidad es la toma de conciencia de que la separación jamás existió. So that's why the whole purpose of the course is just for one thing, is to accept the atonement. Entonces todo el propósito del curso de milagros es para una sola cosa, y es aceptar esa corrección. And this makes Earth look very funny. <laughs> it even makes Course in Miracle groups look very funny. <laughs> Sometimes for tw 20 years they study this book and they argue about, did he, I think he means this, no, I think he means that. <laughs> <laughs> and all the while Jesus is saying, laugh! You've got to laugh at this whole thing. <laughs> Now at one point Jesus says, would you rather be right or happy? Now that's really getting down to the correction. Because if you want to be happy, you have to accept the correction. But if you want to hold on to an opinion, try to make a point, 
Tratar de imponer tu punto de vista. Try to win an argument. Tratar de ganar los argumentos. Or try to be right about anything specific in the whole world. O tratar de siempre tener la razón de cualquier cosa específica en el mundo. Then that's just saying you want to believe in the ego. Pues eso equivale a decir que tú prefieres creer en el ego. So our community is all about practicing releasing ego thoughts. Entonces, de todo lo que se trata nuestra comunidad es de practicar cómo soltar los pensamientos del ego. And we don't spend hours talking about theology. Y no nos pasamos horas hablando de teología. Or spend hours uh, studying the book. Ni tampoco pasamos horas estudiando el libro. All of us have done that. Ya lo hicimos. Uh, Francis had a, a Course in Miracles meetup group in Sydney, Australia. Francis eh, tenía un grupo que se reunía para estudiar el curso de milagros en yeah. Sydney, Australia. And she, it was a large group, 150 members. Y era un grupo grande de 150 miembros. And she taught the course in more of an intellectual way. E impartía el curso de una manera más bien intelectual. Which was a step on her journey. Que era un paso en su camino. But you can tell what happened. <laughs> didn't give me true happiness, that's for sure. No me dio auténtica felicidad. Be Eso lo sé de seguro. Because the course, uh, because David said, you know, the ego is reading the course. Porque como dijo David, el que lee el curso es el ego. So really the course needs to be practiced. Entonces, verdaderamente el curso debe de ser practicado. And the practice is a constant moment by moment surrender. To the Holy Spirit. La práctica consiste en momento a momento rendirte al Espíritu that's, Santo. That's the only way to transcend the ego, not analyze the ego Porque esa es la única by the manera ego. de trascender el ego. No es analizando el ego. And I, lo vas a lograr. I remember actually David said once, maybe many years ago, he said the course cannot be understand, cannot be understood before you wake up. Y yo recuerdo que hace muchos años David dijo, mira, tú no vas a poder entender el curso sin que antes despiertes. So don't try. Así que ni lo intentes. But use that as, as a motivation to know that there is a, a world beyond this. Pero úsalo como una motivación para entender que hay un mundo más allá de todo esto. And we can reach that by following our inner guide. Y que tú puedes tener acceso a ese mundo siguiendo tu guía interior. Step by step. Paso a pasito. Yeah. How do you see the world? Like, what is your perception of the world? <laughs> ¿Cómo percibes el mundo? ¿Cuál es tu percepción del mundo? We both thought the same thing. It's, It's very funny. funny. <laughs> como lo acabamos de decir, como algo muy divertido. It's a comedy. Es una comedia. It's kind of a tragic comedy. <laughs> It's like when you really start to see, like even with relationships, how the ego uses relationships and the Holy Spirit uses relationships. They are completely different. Son formas totalmente diferentes. And the way that the ego uses, say, romantic relationships, y la manera en que el ego utiliza las relaciones románticas, it really keeps us in fear. Nos mantiene en un estado de miedo. And the way that the Holy Spirit uses relationships is to release us from that fear. Y la manera en que el Espíritu Santo utiliza esas relaciones es liberándonos de miedo. So after you go through some of the purification process, entonces después de que pasas por el proceso de purificación. It's like you can't believe that we used to settle uh, our we used to think that relationships were based in love. And no puedes dar crédito que tú solías creer que las relaciones estaban basadas en el amor. We really see how much they were entrenched in fear. Porque en realidad esas relaciones estaban enraizadas en el miedo. So as you start to let go of some of these concepts y about a soltar todos estos conceptos that we've learned from the world, que hemos aprendido del mundo, we get lighter and lighter and lighter. Entonces nos sentimos más y más ligeros. And we start to see that there's no sacrifice in letting go of that way of thinking. Entonces entendemos que no estamos haciendo ningún sacrificio si dejamos soltar esa manera de pensar. That's very true. Yeah. And a, sh a real short answer. Y una respuesta muy corta. It's, it's the same world. 
es que es el mismo mundo without any opinions pero sin opiniones Imagine if your mind had absolutely no opinions about anything. Imagina que tu mente no tuviera absolutamente ninguna opinión formada de nada. And then it's a very happy dream. Y entonces es un sueño muy feliz. Yeah. Yes. The Holy Spirit does see the world as neutral. En de hecho el Espíritu Santo sí ve el mundo como algo neutral. So if you keep joining with the Holy Spirit, eventually you will see the world in the same way that the Holy Spirit sees. <laughs> Well, in the Bible, en la Biblia, Jesus talks about the peace that passeth the understanding of the world. Nos habla de la paz que, que te lleva a un entendimiento del mundo. And in the Course in Miracles, he says, peace and understanding go together. Y en el Curso de Milagros te dice, la paz y el entendimiento, la comprensión, van de la mano, van juntos. And cannot be found apart. Y no se pueden encontrar separados. So, Peace of mind is the condition of the kingdom of heaven. Y nos dice, la paz mental es la condición equivalente a estar en el reino de los cielos. So, will, let me give you a practical example. Permíteme darte un ejemplo práctico. I went to school for many years. Por muchos años fui a la escuela. Kindergarten, Great school, de niños, primaria, junior high, high school, and then 10 more years on top of that. Y luego diez años, además de todo esto. 10 years of university. Diez años de universidad. Undergraduate and graduate. Porque primero licenciatura y luego posgrado. How many is that? 20, 22? 22 years of school, full time. That's right. That, I needed it. I needed that pet. I needed something. So, so what happens then is I come to a realization that nothing that I learned in 22 years brought me peace of mind. Y a la conclusión que llegué después de todo That's a eso, lot of work. es que nada de lo que había aprendido en 22 años me había permitido lograr la paz mental. So once I realized that, I said to Jesus, then, now what? Entonces cuando me percaté de eso, le dije a Jesús, bueno, ¿y ahora qué? He said, forget it all. Y él me dijo, olvídate de todo eso. I will guide you. Yo te voy a guiar. I will tell you everything you need to know. Yo te voy a decir todo lo que necesitas saber. But you will start to forget more and more things Pero about this world. Tú empezarás a olvidar cada vez más cosas que pertenecen a este mundo. And finally, when you don't understand anything at all about this world, <laughs> y por último, cuando ya no entiendas absolutamente nada de este mundo, you will have peace of mind. Tendrás paz mental. And what is the first lesson of A Course in Miracles? Nothing I see means anything. I had a student, I had a student many years ago who said, Oh, those first lessons are insulting. insulting. <laughs> She said, she has said to me, it's going to get better, isn't it? <laughs> He's going to make more sense <laughs> later on. I said, no. If you can get the first lesson, you don't need the, the rest of the 364 lessons. Mira, si tú captaste a profundidad la primera lección, no necesitas las otras 364 lecciones. So that's what I mean by... 
peace and understanding have to go together. And you know that you're awake to the Spirit when you have peace of mind. It looks like we got time for one more, bueno, creo que one more para question. Un más o una so we have a laugher over here and a question <laughs> over here. <laughs> you don't need to ask the question, you're laughing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> When someone is ill, you can help them by seeing them as they truly are. How can you actually do that? Yeah. Do, do you need to translate that in? Or you, she said in Spanish. <laughs> 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 There's all these questions. There. Do you, well, first of all, it's by watching your mind and your thoughts. Because the ego has thoughts of the past and the future. El ego tiene del y del and it has good body thoughts and bad body thoughts. Tiene del y malos and if you hang on to either one, you will perceive the body as real. You see, the body is not the problem. The Holy Spirit sees the body as neutral. It's not evil. Because even though the ego made the body, si el ego hizo el cuerpo, the Holy Spirit already corrected the perception. El Santo ya la so when we hold on to positive body thoughts and negative body thoughts, we project ego meaning onto the body. Lo que estamos haciendo es proyectar los significados del ego Sobre el and by projecting the split onto the body, y esta sobre el cuerpo, it makes the body real in awareness. Hace al real en esta que de, de esta but not real in reality. Pero en realidad, no es real en la realidad. <laughs> so if you perceive a body as sick, Entonces, si tú que un está enfermo, That's local. <laughs> but if you perceive a body as well, Pero si tú un como que está bien, that's local. <laughs> because if you judge it positively or negatively, you've fallen into the ego's trap. Ya caíste en la trampa del ego. And you cannot overlook the sickness. Y entonces no vas a ir más allá de la enfermedad. Here's a line from A Course in Miracles. Mira, te voy a dar una cita del curso de milagros. The mind was sick. La mente estaba enferma. That thought the body could be sick. Porque pensó que el cuerpo podía enfermarse. Because if you believe bodies can be sick. Porque si tú crees que los cuerpos pueden enfermarse. You believe they can be well. Entonces crees que podrán and it's a trap. So, the next time you, you think of complimenting somebody's body, <laughs> or insulting somebody's body, <laughs> remember that this will just keep your mind sleeping and dreaming. I just spoke at a big uh, National Course in Miracles conference. 
en torno al curso de milagros. And a friend of mine had just had surgery. Y a uno de mis amigos lo acababan de operar. And her doctor said, don't go to the conference. Y sus doctores le habían dicho, no vaya a la conferencia. But she really wanted to go. Pero ella de veras quería ir. So she came and uh, she was in a wheelchair. Llegó a la conferencia con todo y que llegó en silla de ruedas. And uh, I had a wonderful experience with her. <coughs> and uh, at one point she said, um, I'm sorry that I had to, to be this way. Y tuve una maravillosa plática con ella y ella en algún momento de la plática me dijo, oye, pues lamento que tuve que llegar en estas condiciones. And I said, what are you talking about? Yo le dije, ¿de qué estás hablando? I see you as whole. Yo te veo completa. I treated her as whole. Yo lo, la traté como una persona íntegra, completa. We had lots of fun, shared Nos lots of happiness. Mucho, compartimos mucha alegría. I just didn't give any meaning to the perception. Yo simplemente no le asigné ningún sentido a, a la percepción de su enfermedad. But it does take practice. Pero se requiere práctica. Mm -hmm. This is Living Miracles Productions. To learn more about David Hoffmeister and the Living Miracles community, please visit www.acim.cc and www.acim.me.